everyone. Today we will reuse a couple of my previous videos and make some modifications to create a real-time data transfer between my Raspberry Pi to FaunaDB, going through AWS's infrastructure. So in this video, we'll quickly review the past three videos. Then we'll see the architecture of today's demo. Then we'll just get straight to the Interactor demo, including merging our past code together connecting AWS IoT to our Lambda function and testing it out. So first, let's see the preparation for this video. The past three videos I've made that connects to this topic are the Raspberry Pi temperature sensor video, the AWS IoT core video, and the AWS Lambda function to connect to FaunaDB. These three technologies will help us today because we want to take temperature data, push it to AWS IoT, and then give it to AWS Lambda as input JSON, where it then finally will give the temperature data to FaunaDB. So here's the architecture. First, we'll take the temperature data from a Raspberry Pi, and through Python, we'll push the data through MQTT, or AWS IoT. We also want to create a new IoT rule that monitors the inbound messages for our IoT core topic and invokes the Lambda function that we've already created in one of my previous videos. And that's it. It should create a real-time serverless data pipeline all the way from an IoT temperature sensor to FaunaDB, passing through AWS's infrastructure. All right, let's get to the demo. So the first thing we have to do is merge the code we made in two of my previous videos into one so that the temperature data is continuously sent from the Raspberry Pi to MQTT. So I'll just go to my Raspberry Pi. I'm remoting into my Raspberry Pi through VNC Viewer, and now we can merge the code. So I'll go to Microsoft Code here so that we can create a new file. Here we go. And I'll open up a new file. And now we can save this. I'm going to save it in the existing folder that I already have for AWS IoT. That already has all the certificates and everything we need. If you want to know how to get the certificates, then you should check out my other video. So I'll call this temperaturedata.py. And we'll just save this here. Okay, now I can just start pasting in some code. If you want an in-depth explanation on all this code, you can check out my other videos. So I'll just close these. Okay, now let's paste in the imports. I'm just importing the regular stuff for Raspberry Pi and the ones for AWS MQTT. And now I'm just gonna paste in some of the setup code. All right, and this code first, we're just uh, initializing the GPIO. And this all this code is connecting to my MQTT. Here we're configuring the AWS IoT endpoint, and these are the certificate files that we have. And here I'll just paste in another function. We're defining setup. This is just setting up and initializing the LCD screen, the GPIO, and the PCF8591. Now we can do the actual Raspberry Pi code where we're calculating the temperature and all that. So let me paste in this code. So here we're defining loop, and this is going through a while loop. And here we're just converting some temperature data to Celsius. Here we're converting it to Fahrenheit and putting it on the LCD screen and now we're just printing it. All right, so we've calculated the temperature and we've printed it on the LCD screen, but we've already done that before. Now I want to take this temperature data and push it to AWS IoT. So how I can do that is by pasting in this code. Here, let me indent this correctly. Okay, so it's saying myMQTT.publish and it's publishing it into this topic with this quality of service and the payload is the actual data. So we're saying temperature is, and then string of Fahrenheit, which is our temperature data in Fahrenheit. And the final thing we're gonna have to do is run these two functions, setup and loop. So I'll say all the way back here, if name equals main, try setup and loop, and then it'll wait for a keyboard interrupt. Okay, now our code is ready. 
All right, so I've repositioned my window so that I can see both of them. And now I'm just going to press test so that we can test this out. I'm going to press subscribe to a topic. And now I can subscribe to this real-time data transfer slash temperature. And I'll press subscribe to the topic. So it's subscribed, and now I can run the code. Here we go, Python temperature data dot pi. And it's showing it here, and it's showing it on the LCD like the other video. And also, it's showing it on AWS IoT. And if I put my finger on this, then it should Im increase 69, 68. And it's showing it here. It's also showing it here. And in the LCD, too. OK, that worked. And it decreases if I take my finger off. See, it's going down to 68 here, here. Okay, so right now we've updated our Python code so that it takes the temperature data and pushes it to AWS IoT. Now we want to create a rule to connect AWS IoT and Lambda. After we do that, there will be a neat flow of data from our Raspberry Pi temperature data all the way till FaunaDB. Since our AWS Lambda function is written to take the input JSON and push it to FaunaDB. So now I'll create a rule. So in act here we have rules, and I don't have any rules yet, so I'm going to create a rule to connect AWS IoT and AWS Lambda. So for the name, I'll say AWS, or no, for the name, I'll say Lambda function, because we want to call it a Lambda function. You can add a description, but I don't want to. For the rule query statement, it's saying select star from IoT slash topic. We want to change this to our topic name. So I already copied it. It's real-time data transfer slash temperature. And now we can set an action. So there's a number of actions you can do. For example, store a message in an S3 bucket or insert a message into DynamoDB. But now we want to send a message to a Lambda function. So I'll press Lambda function and press configure action. Now we can configure the action. So for the Lambda function, we need to select which one we want. In this case, I'm going to use Tech Demo, the one I created in my video to connect AWS Lambda to FaunaDB. So now I'm going to press Add Action. And now we can just press Create Rule. OK, so it created the Lambda function rule for us. All right, so we've successfully created the code. And that was the last step. So now we've created a data pipeline that goes from our Raspberry Pi temperature sensor all the way to FaunaDB. So now we can test it out. So to test it, I'm going to go to test here. And I have to subscribe to the topic, which is real-time data transfer slash temperature. I'll subscribe, and now it's subscribed. So I'll actually, I'm going to open up my FaunaDB so that we can see the data. Here we go. And I'll sign in here. And I will go to my database that I've created in the last video, temperature data. And here we have our collection temperature. Now there's no documents, but we need to add the documents in by itself. So I'll go to Raspberry Pi so that we can run the code. Here we go. So it's saying initiating, and it's sending the temperature already. So if we go to FaunaDB, then it's sending it. And if I put my finger on the temperature sensor, then on the LCD screen it increases. And also, it should increase here if I do this. OK, it added more. And here it is, 67. And it should go down again if I refresh this. All right, that worked. We saw all the steps to build complete real-time serverless data pipeline infrastructure, all the way from an IoT device generating temperature data to storing it in FaunaDB via IoT infrastructure. Once it's passing through AWS infrastructure, possibilities to extend this program to do other functionalities are endless. That's it for today's video. Thanks very much for watching. If you all had any doubts, please comment down below. I'd love to help you out if you're stuck with any technologies we used in this video. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Until then, you can learn anything.